The only difference is we're working with negative numbers, negative powers, okay? So before I could give you something like uh, 2x, or, so let's say y equals 2x power of 3 minus 4, and they would all have positive powers. For example, that would be dy dx equals to 2 times, uh, 3 times, sorry, 2 power of x, uh, x power of 2, my apologies, and then there's no minus 4, I end up with 6x squared. Now what happens if you're presented with something with a negative power? So let's say, for example, y equals to 6x power of negative 3. It's actually the same idea. Exactly the same. All I do is I say, well, y equals 2, negative 3 comes up to the front, negative 3 times by 6x power of, now I bring it down, so it's not going back up, it's still going down. So negative 3 gets pulled down to a negative 4, and my answer ends up being y equals to negative 18, x to the power of negative 4. Do you have any questions about that? No? Okay. Here's where we need to actually apply our understanding of our index laws. If I have an equation f of x equals to 1 over x power of 3 minus x power of negative 4, I need to know that well, 1 over x power of 3 is the same as x power of negative 3. You guys remember that from your index laws? Yeah. Yep. So that equals to 1, so not 1, equals to x power of negative 3 minus x power of negative 4. From there, I do the exact same thing. I say, well, f dash x equals to negative 3x negative 4 minus negative 4 times by x negative 5. So what I've done is I bring out the power to the front and then bring the power down and end up with f dash x equals to negative 3x power negative 4 plus 4x power negative 5. Any questions about that? Yes. Say that again. So index laws. In here. Yeah. Do you mean like like this? Yeah. So what you're saying is at the very end, can I make it as a fraction? Shh. Is your question at is your question at the very end? Can I make it look like this? No. So at the very start, we've got one over x cubed. Yep. And then minus x negative four. X. Yep. So you're saying let's make it f of x equals to one over x power three minus one over x power four. Yeah. It's not very not really a way we can differentiate that without changing that format. Because okay? the whole idea is we're trying to differentiate it. If you wanted to make them like actually subtract them some of that, go ahead. But the idea is we want to try and make them uh, differentiable. Okay. Awesome. So that's the idea. Uh, most of this chapter is under the same point, but let's go ahead and try and do a different example. If I have, and this is on example 18 of your textbook on page 593, if I've got the equation of, and I'm actually going to write out the function notation, so I've got f semicolon r barring 0 towards all r where f of x equals to x squared plus 1 over x at 1, 2. Okay, so I had someone else uh, um, ask me earlier about the function notation, so I thought it would be a good idea for me to actually go ahead and explain it. This first part, actually, let's, let's look at the f. This f obviously stands for function. It's just the function here, okay? Now, the part after that, between the semicolon and the arrow, that's your domain. So just a reminder, domain is your left, right, your x values, okay? Now the one on the right, that's your range. So we're looking at what's the domain and what's the range. Can anyone tell me why x can, now, oh, I forgot to explain, my apologies. This one over here, that line there means except. So the R, what does the R mean, Sean? What does R mean? Range. Close. All real numbers. Perfect. All real numbers, right? All real numbers. And that line means except. So the domain is all real numbers. So X can be any number except for zero. Now, why can X not be zero? Yeah. Close. 
close, close. It's the actually the other term that we're looking at. One over x. What happens if x is zero? Because I mean, you can always square zero. Zero squared is just zero. But one over zero, we've talked about, actually doesn't exist. It's undefined. So there's no possible way you can add an undefined number. Yeah. Do you have a question up the back side? No. Okay. So. Yeah, go for it, John. Uh, um, what is happening in the domain and what's the range? So the domain is your x values and your range is your y values. Okay. Think of it that way. So x cannot be zero. That's the idea. Now, the question is asking for you to find the gradient of the tangent at that point where uh, it's 1, 2, I've written on the right. So we can go ahead and try and do that. So I can say, well, I've got, hmm, I've got f of x equals to f of x, sorry, equals to x squared plus 1 over x. I can find the derivative, but first I'm going to change it into all, um, so that has no fractions. So x squared plus, now 1 over x is the same as 1 over x power of 1, so that becomes x power of negative 1. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay. From here I can find f dash x to be I bring down the 2, so it's 2 times x. Now 2, I bring that down, so it's 1. Plus negative 1, I bring that to the front, times by x, the power of negative 2, because I bring negative 1 down to negative 2. From there, I get 2x minus x, the power of negative 2. That's my f dash x. Now, I've got my derivative to be this one over here, f dash x to be, oops, to be 2x minus x, the power of negative 2. I sub in the value of x, so I say, well, in this point here, I know it goes through x, which is 1, so I can say, well, f dash 1 equals 2, that's not what I want, there we go, equals 2, 2 bracket 1 minus 1 to the power of negative 2, which gives me 2 minus, and then 1 over 1 to the power of 2, which gives me 2 minus 1, which is 1. Have I gone through that too quickly? No? Do you have any questions about that? No? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Does that make sense, generally? Yeah? Okay. Alright, thank you. You guys can continue working.